My name's Jared Banworth. I am a pharmacist. I owned and operated my own compounding pharmacy in Northern California for the better half of, or over 13 years. And in that experience, I got to serve the needs of my patients. And through that, I got drugged through hormone replacement therapy, kicking and screaming. And then when I saw what my patients could do, could, could have a wonderful life and a normal life again, that fueled the passion for going deeper. With that, um, I was able to help a lot of migraineurs, and I had an association with a pain management physician who was mystified how I could cure so many of his female migraineurs. And we developed a wonderful relationship to where we were collaborating on integrative practices for pain management, and I became the second pharmacist in the state of California for prescribing rights and had the wonderful opportunity to manage the whole spectrum of that patient and really do the integrative aspect of pain management and whole health and holistic type of medicine. Well, with that, I also got to get incorporated into A4M many years ago, as well as making connections with aesthetics physicians, and really had a passion fueled of mine on skin health, skin therapy, and things of that sort. So this topic is a little bit of a pa pattern interrupt from what we've been hearing this afternoon, but it's innovations in scar prevention and therapy. And we, there has been some wonderful advancements in technologies in being able to really provide that avenue for our patients in helping them prevent a scar, and if they already have a scar, help diminish the effects of that. So since we only have 30 minutes, we're going to do just a few things. We're going to talk a little bit about the scarring process. We're going to go ahead and um, introduce our next speaker, Dr. Jan Trokel. He's a board-certified facial surgeon um, fa specializing in facial aesthetic contouring. He's a graduate of um, Hofstra University, and then he also did his maxillofacial um, preceptorship at Parkland Memorial Hospital, which is very well known for those types of things. He um, does a lot of uh, different things with volumizing and structural lifting, and you may have heard of the Y lift. He's the one who invented it, and he's going to talk to you about that now. Thank you for that. Can you hear me? Okay, thank you for that introduction. I'll give you a little bit of a, she gave a little bit of a background. I went to dental school first, and then I went to medical school, and then I did general surgery, then maxillofacial surgery, and then I did an aesthetic fellowship after that. And in all my years that I was doing that, I, would, I would always came across facelifts. We did a lot of facelifts. And people were getting them in the 30s and 40s, mini lifts, 50s, 60s. And I used to look and I used to say to myself, well, why is a 40-year-old getting scars put on them? And then I used to look at the older women and I'd say, well, they don't really look a lot very natural. Some women looked a little pulled, a little tightened. So I always started to think, there's got to be something else. There's got to be something else. And I'm going to share with you my journey and my passion over the last 10 years. So let's start with this. Do we have audio? Wow. Man, you should call that the wow lift. Yeah, the wow lift That's is right. Wow. You know what I really notice so much is the jowls here. Wow. 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 It's beautiful, right? amazing. So this procedure was done on the doctors in about 15 minutes, and I'm going to show you. Thank you very much for coming to hear my talk today. I know it's the end of a long uh, few days, so I appreciate you um, coming. And I'm a holistic dermatologist. I started out as a conventional dermatologist and got into alternative medicine, wrote the first integrative textbook on dermatology, and have been speaking here for years. Recently, I did get into t interested in to THC, cannabinoids, and even though this room is pretty empty now, in about two years, everybody will be into it because it's the next big thing. So I'm going to speak about the science behind hemp, cannabinoids, and THC for beauty and skin problems, as well as psoriasis 
eczema, acne, stevia, and even melanoma. There are studies on this. First of all, let's look at what cannabinoids are. They can come from medical marijuana plants or from industrially grown hemp plants. Both are varieties of cannabis sativa, but they're grown for very different purposes. And each one comes with its own legal status, as you know. Um, things are changing very rapidly on a federal level and state level, and we'll see where that all ends up. On the right, you can see hemp plants, and on the left are marijuana plants, and you can see they look identical. Um, <clears throat> CBD or cannabidiol extracts, which are produced directly from cannabis or marijuana flowers, are up to 15% CBD or 150,000 parts per million. CBD extracts can be produced indirectly from hemp manufacturer as a byproduct of the flower. All right, now the next presentation we're gonna be talking about rosacea and everything you need to know, the aesthetic perspective of rosacea. So it's a 30 minute presentation. As you can imagine, I have a, always, for the last 20 years that I've been coming to this conference, for 25 years, I've always have, I always have a lot of slides to present in a very short time. But I think there's a whole entire perspective that we need to consider and for that, uh, I think, it's necessary for you to see from a global uh, venue. So first of all, we need to understand that rosacea is a family of neurovascular skin disorder. We understand that there's some specific areas of the face that we will find the rosacea to somewhat appear more than others, like the butterfly area, the chin, and sometimes the forehead. We know that uh, rosacea may be affecting, usually we say around the age of 30 and over, but it may be also found in a young child, and we're gonna see how that takes place. And rosacea is only located within the face area. We also know that it affects the entire structure of the vascular system. What we see is more of the epidermal, sorry, more of the dermal uh, vascular structure, where it's more of the flush and the blush at the surface of the skin. But entirely, the entire circulation needs to be um, considered. Now, if we look at this chart, I don't know if my pointer will work this far. Let me see this one. If we look at this chart, we know that the pH of the skin, first of all, needs to be always balanced. We know that the pH, healthy skin, should be at 5.5. Uh, but what happens with rosacea is that we do have the dilation of the arterial microcirculation as well as the venous microcirculation that becomes more... Avoid ...the appearance of their hands. So you have to educate people about, yes, Mrs. Jones, we can certainly address that brown spot... Yes, Mrs. Jones, we can certainly change the appearance of those veins on your hands, but let's talk about what's really happened here and what would be your ideal treatment. So it's going to be just like every other, you know, treatment that we should properly offer, combination therapy. And Madonna is... A good example of this. You know, let's face it, we are good at faces because this is the first thing that people tend to object to. And then we start moving down, okay? <laughs> so, and then it goes to the neck and the decollete, then it goes to the hands. At a certain point, it'll go to the body. So, I always say it's like painting one room in your house. You know, it makes, by comparison, the rest of the rooms look like they need rejuvenation as well. So if you look at Madonna, her face looks very youthful and young, but her hands actually show her age. So the aging hand occurs as a result of, as we said, photo damage and the ravages of that, simple aging, and then also volume loss. So photo So hi, I'm very happy to be speaking to you guys today about the Hyperpigmentation, um, called it the dark side. Um, that's a problem that a lot of a lot of patients have. Let me make sure I understand. Oh, here we go. I'm going to try to not talk fast. I know that's one of my um, downsides. I get a, a little nervous and I speak a little fast, so um, I will definitely try to slow things down a little bit. 
Um, so skin color is, you know, just the one, the most perceptible phenotypic variations in humans that we see. And um, it's based on the amount of the melanin synthesis and the melanosomes and the patterns of the distribution. For centuries, um, a lot of cultures, they value a, a lighter skin. It, it, has to do with their class, their caste, whether they were outdoors working or um, uh, more affluent and, and indoors, not in the sun. Um, so there's so, still some of those cultural variances that come up that people are striving for a lighter, more fair skin color. Asian women in particular, are, they really like to have lighter skin and they will do almost anything um, to have a lighter skin you know, way back when it had to do with their marriage prospects. So some of those cultural things just also continue on. So skin lightening, whitening is definitely a, a big business. There's um, a lot of um, dollars being spent every day to, um, to, for women and men to achieve this. Um, and it's one of the most commonly um, practices, modifications that happens. And you know, for most, it's just about an even complexion. We, uh, you know, associate the, um, you know, a younger, more youthful look with a lighter, brighter face and just more even. So spots are out, even, even is in. Um, but you can, you can see this picture is a pretty good description of that. There you guys all know the structure of the skin. Um, this is just a very detailed. Well, looking in the audience here. I'm not sure that anybody here needs to think about age-defying treatments. You all look so young, and it's just the health aspect that this meeting just, you know, gives forward that uh, I think this is more going to be for your patients than for anybody in the room. But uh, I think this session is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to uh, talk about uh, various aspects of both the skin and the body uh, from the standpoint of uh, both anti-aging aspects as well as aesthetic aspects of medicine. Um, I am, I'll be chairing this session, I'm a dermatologist. Um, I, uh, I also run the South Beach Symposium, which is a huge uh, medical and aesthetic clinical meeting in South Beach Symposium, in South Beach, uh, Florida in February, uh, which is also part of the Tarsus Group. Um, and uh, we'll be doing a combination today of a talk, um, which I'll be giving now, sorry about that, and uh, some demonstrations and talking about specific devices today. So I'm going to start off talking about uh, what I love best, which is dermatology and the aspects of dermatology and anti-aging medicines and really looking at innovations uh, to understand both clinically and aesthetically um, what the future, what the present is doing uh, and bringing us as well as what the future will bring us. Um, this is a, let me just, am I not? No? Let's try this again. There we go. Um, as part of a CME, these are my disclosures. I work with many, many companies um, from the standpoint of research pr uh, primarily. I do a lot of research. I consult with a lot of companies. Um, and I do a lot of speaking, uh, primarily uh, through CMA. So as we age, two things happen. Um, we go out in the sun and our skin uh, gets UV damage and ages, um, but also our body changes. Uh, the U.S., as we know, has an epidemic of obesity, um, fat where we don't want it, and at the same time, we're losing fat where we do want it aesthetically, and it's making us look older. And this is a combination of both biologic and environment. This is for. Okay, so here are my disclosures. Not quite as long as your list, I don't think. <laughs> um, today, this again, this is uh, not specifically talking about any certain brand. If anyone has any questions about what I use in my office, I'm happy to s just explain it to you. I will tell you that every single photo in this. Uh, basically presentation is from my patient, my office. There's only one that I had to take from the company uh, so I could show you what it did. But again, everyone else is actually my before and afters. So I think now that we've talked about what we can do uh, filling the face, we're going to talk about what we can do to get rid of stuff. And we're talking about, I think that the body is an aspect. How many of you perform body treatments in your practice or offices? Not many. Okay. I think that 
a lot of people are looking for what's out there. What can they do to improve the skin as it ages? And we see a lot of skin changes, uh, the distribution of the fat on the body, improving that as well. And so there are many different uh, products that are out there now that will work to reduce fat cells and will work to, in addition to reducing those fat cells, actually tighten up the skin. And Weight loss does so much, exercise does so much, so we're trying to figure out what are the other options we have to improve the body. Sometimes what we're looking for as, as doctors, as physicians, as healthcare providers, it's not exactly the same thing that our patients want, but sometimes they overlap. I think it was interesting that the percentage of patients, this was a study in 2012 at the ASDS that showed that over half of the patients interested in cosmetic procedures were actually interested in treatments that specifically would sculpt the body. And so they want these fast procedures. I think the idea is to... Um, I would like to introduce our next speaker, who is Dr. David Goldberg. And uh, Dr. Goldberg is, again, another person who has been a significant innovator in the field of aesthetics, cosmetic um, surgical procedures with lasers and um, is truly considered a leader in this field. So he is recognized nationally and internationally for his innovation work with skin lasers, cosmetic dermatology, facial rejuvenation techniques. He's a board certified dermatologist and an attorney, which I don't see uh, mentioned in here, but um, and has been in practice since 1985. He's treated patients um, throughout and taught doctors throughout the world and is considered an educator in this field as well. And he practices currently in New York where he has um, the skin, laser, and surgery specialist of New York and New Jersey. Um, and they do a lot of research there as well. So he has been involved in a lot of the research for the devices that you'll be seeing at this um, meeting. And so I welcome Dr. David Goldberg, and um, we're so pleased to have you. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Sharon. Um, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. When Mark asked me to come down and speak about six, eight weeks ago, he said to me, David, you have a choice on Friday today. He said, you can either 